any action to influence the candidacy. Hey, your testimony is Bob Mueller did not kick you off because of the content of your text. He kicked you off because of some appearance that he was worried about. Sure. My testimony, what you asked and what I responded to was that he kicked me off because of my bias. I'm stating to you it is not my understanding that he kicked me off because of any bias, that it was done based on the appearance. If you want to represent what you said accurately, I'm happy to answer that question, but I don't appreciate what was originally said being changed. I don't give a damn what you appreciate, Agent Strzok. I don't appreciate having an FBI agent with an unprecedented level of animus working on two major investigations during 2016. Okay, you know we like it spicy here and over time. We served you some. Adrian Elrod served as Director of Strategic Communications for Hillary Clinton. Her name came up a lot today. Alexandra Smith, Executive Director of America Rising PAC. Uh, Alexandra, I'll go, with, go to you first. Um, Chairman Goodlatte of the House Judiciary struggled at times to wrangle some of the heated participation today, uh, but there was a lot of information. Well, I think that the tensions were so high because so much, so much is at stake. We really need to understand what is going on in these text messages and the extent to which Peter Strzok used his official capacity to in any way hinder the Trump campaign. Um, you know, this wasn't some idle chit chat, uh, you know, some you know, uh, varying political opinions, just some light political banter. This was saying that he was going to stop the president's election. Uh, and he was someone who was in a critical enough role where he could have potentially influence that. And so I think that we really do need to know as Americans what was going on there. Can we, Adrian, get on the record? Because we have been uh, collecting information all hour long here in our break uh, about just how powerful Peter Strzok was. I mean, this is a person who could go into a document that had labeled Hillary Clinton's investigation and her role in it as grossly negligent. Yeah. And then change that wording mm -hmm. to extremely careless. This was a person whom a Democrat earlier this hour described as the top counterterrorism official at the FBI at one point. This was a man with a lot of power. That's important. Yeah, he, d he certainly did have a lot of power and, and that is important, but I think the one thing that we've got to remind, remind ourselves of here is that the IG report actually addresses the grossly negligent claim. And I apologize, I'm looking at my notes here because I just That's want to make okay. sure I get this right. So there's a lot to unpack today. Um, the IG report looked into this and investigated this, which of course is an independent arbiter of what happened, you know the right? Ideas, so we yeah. know, right? Um, and they made it very clear that he, they, they did not see any wrongdoing in this terminology and that, that this was not actually They said it wasn't negligent. political bias, but they didn't say, the IG report didn't say it wasn't bias. Right. They said it was not politically biased. Well, and I think that, you know, for most of us looking at this, it runs counter to, you know, our intuition as humans. We're all biased in some way. And so I think to say that, it, that these opinions did not color his work Work in this mm. investigation would be impossible. Everyone remembers how heated 2016 was. Everyone remembers whether it was talking to your neighbors or different people that things were really tense. You know what else we remember just to show how heated it was? We remember that his former boss, James Comey, jumped in at one point and thought it was his role. Right. <laughs> yes. right you know, two Julys ago, thought it was his role right. to make it look like perhaps she'd been exonerated based on now we know the wording that was changed by the very man in the hot seat today. Uh, and he will be back. This will be on in less than 20 minutes. And, and I would say, just from the members that I've been talking with today and this hour, one of the questions that should be asked is, how can you prove that your bias didn't didn't interfere. Well, and I think to the point you just made, I mean, everybody is going to have political opinions. That is just part of human nature. It's not part a political, of who you are. though. But, but well, not what political. What other bias could he have had? In? And I think what we have got to see from Peter Strzok today is his proof that none of his political leanings influences his decision What do you need making. to see? What proves it? I mean, I need, I need to, first of all, we need to see that there's not discrepancy in some of his testimony, right? Well, there already has so been, because sometimes he can remember stuff and sometimes he couldn't. And, and the suddenly, very line will stop it. Apparently, he struggled to remember. Hold on one second. We're coming right back. Power panel back. Adrian Elrod, Alexandra Smith. Uh, before we go to you ladies, though, I want to give you something to respond to. Uh, Chairman Goodlatte pressed Peter Strzok, that former FBI agent, uh, at the heart of all of the testimony and, and controversy right now, on why he would say such horrendous things about President Trump supporters. And that exchange uh, was really interesting to watch because it was a one-on-one -on, -one on the actual tech me text messaging that Strzok was sending to Lisa mm -hmm. Page. We know we're going to hear from Page tomorrow. Uh, it was about Trump voters and how he was in Southern Virginia. Here's what he said about them. 
What does Trump support smell like, Mr. Strzok? Sir, that's an expression of speech. I clearly wasn't smelling one thing or the other. What I meant by that was living in Northern Virginia, having traveled 100 and 150 miles south within the same state, I was struck by the extraordinary difference in the expression of political opinion and belief amongst the community there. And, and from you where described I live. that as smell in capital letters. Sir, that was a choice of the quick choice of words. Wow. So some text messages you don't remember and the others, which are incendiary, are a quick choice of words. <laughs> Alexandra? You know, I think it really speaks to the level of hubris that we see in these text messages. And that was something that was apparently mm -hmm. mirrored in the testimony he provided behind closed doors to congressional members. Um, some of them described him as arrogant, as uh, conceited. And I think that this is someone who still doesn't understand, you know, what he did was wrong or why he did what he did was wrong. He, you know, I, I can't imagine what possessed him and Lisa Page to use their government issued cell phones to make these communications yeah. um, and to, you know, to what what would have really been such a you know a terrible um, mark on the FBI's reputation of all these hardworking men and women who otherwise are doing their jobs. Yeah, and you know what I'm thinking of as you're talking? Lack of judgment. I mean, we've already talked about the level of responsibility that this particular FBI agent had in several investigations in counterterrorism around the world. Um, the, the le why didn't James Comey just fire him? Should he have, Adrian? You know, I think there's still a lot to be left to be seen in this situation. Do you and wish he had? I, I, I wish he had in the sense that now I feel like this is only playing right into the narrative that the deep state, the Republicans and the far right are pushing to the deep state. Is it's hard to keep away from that, do you think? It, 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 it plays right into it, and that's what's so unfortunate. And, and, and it only does more to um, take away trust from the FBI. And I think mm -hmm. what needs to happen, not just from the FBI standpoint, but St Peter Strzok's uh, testimony this afternoon, um, it, and by the way, this is also why we need to see the testimony be released from that he gave uh, a couple weeks ago in front of the committee that Jerry Nadler really pressed today to have that released. But we need to know we need to know more information and we need to have this information out there mm -hmm. so that public trust can be restored in the, in the FBI, because that is where the real problem is to me. Well, OK, public trust. But how about that proof or, or some sort of burden of proof there should be? Uh, and maybe we'll hear it from Lisa Page, because when Peter Strzok says he's speaking on behalf of the American people when he texts, we'll stop it, meaning President Trump getting into the White House, then candidate. Which category did she fall into? Was she was she just all of the American people or was she an agent? I mean, that's what do you anticipate well, her? Exactly. And, and, then, and that's also why all of these text messages need to be released in full. Right. So we can completely understand the context. I think that's part of the issue, too. So what about that, Alexandra, the, the, the release of this information? By the way, the way stuff has been leaking off Capitol Hill. I'm surprised we haven't yeah. seen more. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, with the interest of national security, I think that things should be released, um, keeping that in mind, of course, um, because I think full transparency is the only way that we're going to, you know, assure the American people about what was going on in this situation and that they can feel confident going forward that it's not going to happen again. Well, I can tell you, we know a lot from those text messages already. Watch this. As Chairman Gowdy himself said, if you are innocent, act like it. Today, I urge our chairman to change course and to keep their promises to protect the integrity of the special counsel's ongoing investigation. And instead of asking hundreds of questions that undermine it, to work with him. If you are innocent, act like it. You know, I have to give Chairman uh, or, uh, you know, Representative Cummings some credit there because, uh, you know, he's I think what he's speaking to is that for Democrats, this just seems to be a losing issue. I'm not sure why they're working so hard to protect this guy. I mean, this guy sent text messages that mm. had that, that were so colored and biased and did so in an official capacity as, as a member of the FBI. And so I don't know why, you know, what they gain politically from, you know, being on this guy's side. Look, uh, Representative Cummings is getting a shout out from a lot of people today. I mean, mm -hmm. he, he walked this down the line of, look, uh, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, but, but it certainly felt like he was looking at this saying, okay, let's just get the facts here. You have to admit, Peter Strzok, that what you did was <laughs> cause a problem. Well, exactly. And we were talking about this, Harris, during the break that, you know, both sides of the aisle, not just Democrats were, and, and, or not just Republicans, but both sides of the aisle have got to like, let's take out some of this rhetoric here and let's actually get back to the facts and try to understand really what happened here. Well, Gowdy was trying to. 
Gaddy was trying to get to the facts. And he's a very to. colorful guy, mm -hmm. so it got very heated. Um, but Peter Strzok had some, some moments, too, where it was very contentious. Those are the facts, even though they're sometimes hard to hear. Uh, you know, if you're innocent, act like it, though, is an interesting turn of phrase, right? Because are we going to see any sort of line of burden of proof where Peter Strzok can say, no, I really didn't mean, you know, I know he regrets tearing down Trump supporters, but was he really actively working against their well, cause? Well, and that's, what, that, that's where the burden of proof is on him, right? Yeah, I don't know how you do it. We do have the IG report. We do have the IG report, but this is up to him to make those, to, to come out and prove to the well, American people. Well, he didn't people. write the report. Right, he so, didn't write right. the report, but it is an, the independent arbiter, if you will, of, of the investigation, which is why it, it, the burden is on him to come out and show But it that still I points to some kind of bias. So what was that bias? And, and you know, I, I know the conspiracy theory that you don't like to ever mention the word of deep state, and I understand that, mm -hmm. um, but what would the other kind of bias be. Alexandra, you talked about it momentarily that we all come with a point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, he talked about how in the handbook you can't bring your opinions to work. You're on a work phone texting these things. Terrible. Clearly your judgment about what was in the handbook is suspect. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think that, you know, we all come with our biases, biases to our various positions, but this is someone who used his official, you know, government capacity, official government uh, channels of communication uh, to express those biases, and I think that that's of great concern. There's the Inspector General's report, but we're in a situation in politics where perception matters more than reality, and so the reality of the IG's report simply just is, is paling in comparison to the, the glaring image of these text messages, and that's what people are remembering out of this. So true. Lisa Page tomorrow. Quickly, Adrian. Uh, we'll see how much of her testimony is in sync with um, Peter Strzok's testimony and how much of it's different. And I think if there's a lot of, if a lot of it's different, then there's going to be even more questions that are raised. Wow. All right. This is going to start at any moment here. And as we sit here, we see a man who at the FBI was ahead uh, of investigations that top rung. They called it the skinny inner circle inside the FBI, Peter Strzok. Investigations looking into Russia collusion and more. Hillary Clinton and more. Stay close. We're perched.